Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, South Africa. Salamat siyang to all my Indonesian friends. Yes. Hallelujah. It's Wednesday morning. The time now, 8 o'clock in South Africa, 1 o'clock in Indonesia. Uh, I believe South Africa is already cold. Winter has started. Here in Indonesia, it's really hot. The humidity really high. But yes, we will not be stopped by whatever is going on outside. We will still preach the Word of God. We will still speak the Word of God, equip edifying people. Amen. So yeah, good morning. Good morning. I'm sitting here in the aircon room, but yes, it's still really, really hot. Um, I cannot see who's on yet, but good morning. Good morning, Pastor Marius. Doc Marius, my God bless you this morning. You and Doc Aniki. Thank you for your friendship. Thank you for your guidance. May God bless you, Doc. Yes, hallelujah. What a man of God. Amen. What a man of God to be associated with, Doc Marius. Who just give his everything, everything for the ministry and, you know, for the people involved in his life. Lydia, Huyamora, good morning. Hallelujah. Good morning, good morning, good morning. They're from Uppington, praise God. Um, what a privilege this morning. We will sit around the Word of God and we will just um, edify. And uh, yeah, we will learn from the Word of God. I mean, yes, Lydia, we pray for Jesse. We pray for God that God will raise him up for the calling that is in his life. And uh, yes, we pray for your Jess. We pray for you. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, I'm not going to waste time. I really want to jump into it. People will come on as we will continue. But let's pray and we start this morning. Father, I thank you this morning for the word of God. I thank you for your glory. I thank you for who you are. Just to be in your presence. Just to be where you are right now, Lord. Nothing matters. The only thing is receive our worship, receive our, our praises, Lord. Holy Spirit, just come and saturate everyone right now, where they are. I just pray for a, for a peace of calmness right now, right now, where they are, Lord. Whatever try to disturb them, whatever try to influence people to listen, Lord, we rebuke it in Jesus' name. We pray, Holy Spirit, send forth your angels to just to, to make way for the glory of God. Father, I honor you right now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you through your stripes we can receive healing, healing right now. In the presence of God, there's healing, there's breakthrough. In Jesus' name, Lord, I pray, I pray this morning that you will touch everybody. May also we learn and discern through the Word of God. In Jesus Christ's name, Amen, Amen, Hallelujah. Beulah, goeiemorgen, good morning, uh, Wiwin, good morning, good morning, Salamat Siang in Jakarta. Uh, Inach, goeiemorgen, good morning, uh, I believe also my mom is already on, good morning, good morning, then Kimberly. So, my question and my theme this morning is, God is interest in who, you know, who are your friends? God's interest in your friends. Now you can say, you know, how can it be? But I want to bring you into a story. You know, when you walk in righteousness, the devil will always attempt to raise up somebody against what God is doing in your life. When you enter, when you, let's say you, you receive a breakthrough and God is bringing you to the promises that He has for you, there will always be, you know, somebody that will be raised up by the enemy to try to curse you, to try to deviate you. Now, to just to get you into the story before I will read in Numbers chapter 22, here God's people came from Egypt. They on a threshold going into the promised land. So here we have the place where Moses actually died, where God uh, buried him, the place where they mourned, the place, you know, but also during their 40 years, they had, uh, Pastor Tolly, good morning. 
they had the Amalekites they had to deal with. The Amalekites was always there. They tried to, to steal and rob the people, especially on the outskirts of the people following, you know, uh, the cloud and, and the fire uh, and day and night. You know, you would find people that say, well, we had enough. We not follow this anymore. How long should we turn, you know, uh, move around this mountain? That's all we do. There's no progress. Where's the promises of God? So people did fall away and Amalekites will overcome them. But there were many times where God's people will had an encounters with the Amalekites and just destroy them. So the message of this also came to the Moabites and the people, you know, in the promised land. So God's people come out and they are about to enter the promised land and, you know, the, the enemy will try to do anything to discard what God is speaking to you. Maybe you on, uh, Pastor Rian and Carissa, goeiemorgen, good morning. Maybe you on a, on, on a threshold of a breakthrough, of entering into something. I believe this message this morning is just to be cautious. Who is your friends? Who is the people you accompany or accompany you during, you know, your everyday life? And let's go this morning to Numbers 22 verse 6. I want to just show you something. So now understand God's people are preparing. They've had their 30 days of mourning about Moses. Joshua is about to take the people in the promised land. And this whole scenario plays itself off before entering into the promises. And I want you to open up your spirit so that we can have discernment how the enemy come trying to destroy what God is doing in your life, your breakthrough. Numbers 22, verse 6. Come now, curse the people for me. Speaking about the Israelites, curse the Israelites for me. You know how many times that people, you know, will come against you and curse you, especially when God is blessing you. Have you ever found that? You enter into a, into a period where the blessings of God, the heavens just open and not just financially, promotion, everything in your life is just, it's like you enter into the promises of God and then there will be people cursing you, you know, trying to change the view of where does all come from. Now listen what happened. Come now, curse this people for me since they are too mighty for me. You see, when people cannot fight the battle, what happens is they will always return to something. And we find it today even in the church that sisters will curse each other when they mad at one another or the one is more blessed than the other one or the one received more. Now, this is listen to what the Moabites or the people said. Curse this people since they are too mighty for me. Perhaps I should be able to defeat them and die, drive them from the land. For I know that he whom you bless is blessed, and whom you curse is cursed. Now, who are the people speak about? Who is the man that have the ability to, to, to speak a curse and somebody will be cursed? To speak a blessing and somebody is blessed. I want you to see the story. Let's go to verse 7. So the elders of Moab and the elders of Midian departed with the fees for divination in the hand. So they're willing to pay to someone to curse Israel, you know, to curse the, the people before they enter into the promised land. They have their fees of, for divination for doing the job. And they came to Balaam and gave him Balak's message. They came to Balaam. Now the story is about Balaam. Let's go on. And he said to them, Lodge here tonight and I will bring back word to you as the Lord speaks to me. So the prince of Moab stayed with Balaam. People in authority stayed with this man that was a soothsayer. In Joshua we read about that. Yet he had an ability. He was not part of Israel. He was already somebody living there in one of the, you know, one of the foreigners or, or, the, or, the, or the Gentiles, as we can say, or the heathen people. But this man was a soothsayer. And even the princes and people in high places knew about Balaam and knew about the power he, he has to curse and to bless. And they're willing to pay him 
for the supernatural. Now, I want you to see something. God's people are on the threshold coming into the promised land. But the enemy is raising somebody up with supernatural power to curse Israel so that the enemy can defeat them. I want you to see that. It's, there's a, there's a, a warning. Many times as you will enter into what God has promised, there will be a voice trying to speak over you that you know it will not happen it's like it's like cursing the promise for not being happening now they knew Moab and Midian that God's people was were, 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 were strong and they thought by supernaturally entering into this battle will favor them and they're willing to pay everything even send the prince with Balaam as a token of their support for him because they were afraid of Israel. I want to tell you, when the devil is afraid of you, he will try to raise up people against you to speak something and cursing you. Speaking something behind your back. Because why? It's your time of taking possession of what God has blessed you for. It's time. It's the time when God wants to bring you out of the desert into your promises. There will always be the devil will raise up somebody that think they have the power in the supernatural. You know, uh, and, and many times, and this is my message, the people hanging with these people are usually the source of the things that are coming forth from them. Let's see. And he said to them, Lord, here tonight, I will bring back to you as the Lord speak. Verse 9, And God came to Balaam and said, Hallelujah. You know, nothing escaped God, even what's going on there in the heathens. Listen, I want to tell you this morning, when God wants to bless you and, and the devil is raising up people against you, God knows about them. God knows about their strategy. God knows about their plans. When He says, do not fear, you enter the promised land, I will be with you. It means that God will be with you. You do not need to fear. You do not need to, even when people are being raised up, God knows and He will deal with that. So what happened? And God came to Balaam and said, who are these men with you? You know, it's like, Balaam, you have the ability, you as soothsayer, to activate something in the supernatural. You have a gifting that the enemy is using. Who are these men with you, Balaam? Who are these men that influence you, that you dare to stand up against the people of God? And I want to speak to the Balaams out there. There are so many people standing up on social media and speak ill to the body of Christ, speak ill to, to, to the people of God. But who are these men with you? And this is my message. Who are the men that you allow in your life? Will they influence you for the good or for the bad? Amen. And Balaam said to God, Balak the son of Zippor, he said, uh, uh, the king of Moab, he the king of Moab has sent me saying, the enemy has sent me saying, verse 11, behold, a people has come out of Egypt. The children of God comes out of the, the desert, coming out of the whatever kept them back. And it covers the face of the earth. Now come curse them for me. Perhaps I shall be able to fight against them and drive them out. I want you to be clear, sometimes the devil will raise up people that has a gifting. But it's the people they run with, the people that, they, that are, uh, is with them are the main cause for them to speak ill and cursing and doing things in the, in the natural. Why? Because their intention is not true. Alright, verse 12, God said to Balaam, you shall not go with them. I want to tell you this morning when the Spirit of God comes upon you and says, you stop your nonsense. You're not going with these people anymore. You need to make a choice with whom you will go with. So what happened? You shall not go with them. You shall not curse the people for they are blessed. You know, when I read this, it's like God is saying, listen, you are blessed. 
You are happy and prosperous. Doesn't matter your outside condition. Uh, Pharaoh, good morning. Salamat siyang. So, what, whatever. God said, you shall not go with them. Who are the people you are surrounding you with? You shall not curse the people for they are blessed. You know, God's people is blessed. Verse 30. So Balaam rose in the morning and said to the prince of Balaam, Go to your own land for the Lord has refused to let me go with you. Yes, even the, he act upon, you know, God has spoken with me. I will not do it again. I will send this prince away. But you know, the devil will not stop his lies and deceit. Because when the purpose, understand Balaam got a huge reward for the things he was about to do. Sometimes money make us crazy. And the, and the, and the mindset of that I can get something will make us not to, to take a stand and chase away the people that's not supposed to be in our lives. So he says, so let's see, for the Lord has refused to let me go with you. So the prince of Moab rose and went to Balak and said, Balaam refused to come with us. The devil will always try to keep you in what deceivement you are. You understand? Let's go on. So once again, Balak sent now princes more in number, more honorable, honorable than these. The devil don't let go Balaam, even when God spoke to him. The enemy just sent more people with influence to keep him to the place where he should curse God's people. And they came to Balaam and said to him, Thus says Balak the son of Zophar, Let nothing hinder you from coming to me, for I will surely do you great honor. Whatever you say to me, I will do. Come curse this people for me. You see, the enemy will do whatever. You know, it's amazing if you look at how Jesus was tempted. You know, uh, you know, if you just bow down, I will give you everything. You see, but the fight is, is, is in the spirit. Understand this. But the desires is in the natural through the flesh. So the king said, you know, whatever you want, I will give it to you. But just use your supernatural power, your soothsaying power to curse these people. Because without that, I don't think I can have a victory over them. That's the message. Verse 18, but Balaam answered and said to the servants of Balak, Thou Balak were to give me his house full of silver and gold. I could not go beyond the command of the Lord my God to do less more. Even he realized this is God. Even he discerned that God spoke to him, knowing this is God. Yet he tried to be separated from, from the king of, of Midian and the king of Moab, the, you know, King Balak. He, 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 he tried to. But if you do not make a stand and draw a line, the enemy will still keep on pursuing you. And especially the people in your life that's not supposed to be there will keep on pursuing you to do the wrong things. Verse 19, So you too, please stay here tonight, that I may know what more the Lord will say to me. And God came to Balaam at night and said to him, If the men have come to you, call, call you, rise, go with them, but only do what I tell you. So Balaam rose in the morning and saddled his donkey and went to the princes of Moab. Now we come to verse 22. But God's anger was kindled because he went and the angel of the Lord took his stand in, in the way uh, as his adver adversary. Um, so he was now riding on the donkey and his two servants were with him. So even God spoke to him, yet he still chose to pursue the king of Balak and the princes. Now, who was this man? He was a suicide in Joshua 13, 22, referred to him as a suicide. I mean, he had the ability to, 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 to buy a suicide to discern the things in the supernatural on the spiritual realm. But how come he did such wicked things? How come he was so uh, uh, easily being manipulated because of one thing the desire of money being used not for the use of God and also being not part of Israel but a heathen 
Even he had this gifting. You know, it was easy for the enemy to capture that. So the first thing, and this is my message this morning. Whom are you traveling with? Who are the people that's in your life? Here we see the king of, of Balak, uh, the Moab and the Midian. Uh, they saw an opportunity in the supernatural to try to overthrow God's people. But God did not allow. And even God said, these people are blessed. But I see what you do. So the first thing, observe by God. So God is looking at the people in your life. What are the things coming through your mouth? Are you cursing God's people? Are you cursing the church? Are you speaking ill of the body of Christ? When somebody receives something from God, are you excited or are you negative? And it's because God observe, we see here, the people you're traveling with. In here, Balaam, the people, the influences was not for the good of Israel, but was for the bad. So the guests we entertain, the persons who visit us, the associations we enter into, the friendship we form, are all known unto the Lord. Amen. The second thing, challenged by God. The men, what men are these with thee? Balaam was challenged about the people he hung out with. This inquiry was made neither because the Lord needed information nor yet simply to open the conversation on the mission of the messenger of Balak. It was designed to awaken the slumbering conscience of Balaam, to lead him to reflect upon the proposal which men had made and to break the force of his sinful inclination. God addresses the same question to the young who are formed dangerous associations, especially people in the church today. Especially young people that do not have yet the wisdom or the knowledge that easily being influenced by people in and around them. Amen. So he urges them solemnly, you know. So how did he urge Balaam? By a voice of conscience. Balaam, who are these people with you? By the preaching of the truth. You cannot curse my people because I've blessed them. And then by the exhortation and monations of his word. They are my people. And then by the demonstration of his spirit. So we, we may regard this concern as an indication of the divine solicitude for the well-being of man. Nothing whatever that is of importance to us is uninteresting to God. Maybe we think some things is not that important, but for God, they are truly important. Hello, my darling wife. In every man created in his image and redeemed by his precious blood of his son, he has the deepest and tenderest concern. I want to tell you today, maybe you find yourself on the threshold of a breakthrough and suddenly people rise up against you. You just stand your ground. Let God fight the fight. God is knowing What's going on? If there's people speaking ill and trying to curse you, God will deal with that. Amen. If you are that person that's speaking ill of people in the body of Christ, be aware God will not let you go. He will fight on behalf of His own children against the people even having the ability and the gifting and the anointing. But if it's used for the wrong purpose, God will reveal that. Amen. I say in as much as he is so concerned as to the character of our associates. Uh, more or my sissy. So God is concerned about the people, the character in your life. Balaam, who are these people that you are walking with? What is their character? They are willing to pay for the gifting, but for the cursing of God's people. And you know one thing I just realized, we find it so many times if people are offended in the church, it's so easy to curse somebody else. You find it in so many, so many churches. How do they curse? They come in prayer and intercession and they speak ill of people before the threshold of God. That's cursing. 
And God said we are called to be a blessing. But many times the reason is the people you are walking with. That is not truly in the light of Christ. They have harbored certain sins in their lives. They will push you in your ministry, especially if you have a gifting of the prophetic. What happens? Because there's a power when you open your mouth. But if it's even used for the devil, there's a power being released. But I want to tell you, if God is for you, He will encamp His angels around you. But He will deal with the people. It's not Israel did not have to deal with Balaam or the Midianites at that moment or that time. God dealt with them in secret. Even they planned these things. And I want many times you want to get involved in people trying to curse you. But it's not your place. Let God deal with that. You just pray for those people. I said our associates indicate our character. Who are you associating? Who are these people that you allow in your life? A man is known by the company which he keeps. Our association influences our character. He that walk with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Who are the people? And that's what God is asking us this morning. Who are the people in your life? Who are the people that influence you? Are there are the, the people that build you up and, and praise God with you? Doesn't matter the conditions. Or are, is it people that lack faith and easily curse God and even is, you know, swearing and around you and your life is bad character in your presence? Because what will happen? It will influence you. And you know, we've seen it with, with COVID. You know, all of the people, so many people had their own ideas. They had their own perceptions. They had their own. And many of them were influenced by other people that did not seek the righteousness of God. And we were so busy on social media, you know, speaking about all of these, you know, things, hidden things. But we spoke against the children of God that did not follow what other people's believe. We find it. We still find it today. So who are the people that you are surrounding yourself with? Amen. An indication of our responsibility to God for our companions, for the associations, form and the alliances, we contract, we must, everyone give account to God. You can hang around the wrong people. At some point, it will influence you. You know, I read the story. Uh, maybe I will come to that. In, in the river Thames, the river, uh, what is that? Uh, let me just get to it. Uh, I really want, yeah. Uh, the river Thames. You know, uh, it was this sweet and pretty river near its source. But in the great metropole of, I think it's in Britain, huh? Uh, you know, it kept company with the drains and sewers. I read this today. It was just amazing. So this powerful river clean that the people thought if they can make the river flowing through the underground of Britain, it will clean the sewers and the drains. So the mindset was as long as the river is flowing through the underground of Britain, we will not need to be influenced because the constant flow of the river will clean the sewers of Britain. So they had this idea and they had this belief that it was a good thing. It was meant that the river should purify the sewer. But this, instead of that, the sewer has corrupted the river. You know, many times we... And that's why God is saying this morning... Who are these people with you? Are they people from that create life and light of God, the love of Jesus? Or are they the drains and the sewers? And by thinking the light, the, the, the water of God will change them, but rather they will change you? How many people become sewers and drains, even in the flow of the miraculous and even in the flow of the Holy Spirit, the supernatural, but also in the glory of God? You cannot be with the wrong people with the wrong mindset. People that their character is not of God. 
Because if so, it will start to influence you. You will lose your divine freshness in the presence of God. You know, and then you will start to follow their bad habits. You start to follow their bad things. Amen. I say uh, an indication of the danger of, you know, delaying with temptation. Balaam should have sent the messengers back to Balak at once with a firm refusal, Pastor Michel Kuyamora, to comply with his request. When God spoke, he should have said, you go. I'm not open for discussion. He's longing for the reward of divination. Let him to keep them for the night. Let them to keep them in the present just another night. You find this many times. You know, people walking with people in the world, especially, you know, this one fall in love with this one. This one is born again. This one not. This is just a religious person. Then this person says, Listen, I will influence this person. God will use me in this relationship to bring this one to God. But what happened over time? This one, the sewer and the drainage will start influencing your relationship with Jesus Christ. The way you speak, the way you act, the way you used to become diluted by the rubbish of the other one. And this is the message this morning. But what happened? He was so focused on the reward and he let them stay the night. What was his problem? He didn't make it clear cut and said, you go. And I believe, especially parents with children, you know, young adults, you must sit them, listen to your parents' wisdom. When they say no, deal immediately with that. Because if you honor them, they are your protection. They're not there to, to rob you of something. No, they want to protect you. They can see further the people and they will ask, who are these people in your life? Because out of their own experiences, they've learned that hanging with the wrong crowd can influence your future, can influence your relationship with God. So what Balaam, he kept them for the night and by so doing, he increased the paralysis of his position tenfold. He make it more difficult to parley with temptation is to play with fire. I want to conclude this morning. It's so amazing that God came to Balaam and said, who are these people? And I'm asking especially to the young adults, who are the people you're allowing in your life? in your relationships, in your friendships, and especially also in the body of Christ, the older people, the, the spiritually more mature. How many of us, if you allow the wrong people, you will start deviate from the truth of the Word of God? Because people with wrong motives eventually will influence you. You start walking in purity like the river Thames. You start walking and you thought, Oh Lord, nothing can change me. Then the devil brings somebody that just throw a seed of unbelief, a seed of a different character. And what happened? It starts to grow and you start to deviate and allow certain things. Ah, oh, this is not too bad. This sin is not too big. Gossip is not really that bad. Speaking ill about this one is not really. What happened? You start being changed by the people you hang out. Come on. If you want to grow past Eddie Guyamora, good morning. You need to hang out with the godly people that is serving God in spirit and in truth. People that build up not to break down. Pe not people that speak ill about people because if you speak negative, you are cursing. You are cursing. And you're doing the same thing as Balaam. But the only thing is, people are doing this to credit themselves. And I want to pray this morning for you, that God will bring you the sermon. I believe the message is, who are the people in your life? Are they building you up? Are they bringing you closer to the presence of God? Or are you falling away? Are you still living and honoring with the people in leadership in your church or the people God has placed spiritual authority God has placed it because the moment if you start doubting and start moving away ask yourself where does it come from isn't it the influence of people that's anti-church so many people are not going to church because they are influenced by people that is mad people that got hurt in church and they have now this broken heart and they filled with the mess and the rubbish 
of what the devil has imparted them and they speak ill about the body of Christ, about pastors, leadership and church and they staying at home. If you surround you with people staying at home, soon you will stay home too. You will find a way to see the, you know, to, 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 to see the faults in the people that's serving God, coming to church. People that say, well, the worship does. Well, if you hang out with the people that has a problem with the worship, soon you will have a problem with the worship. Soon you will come home and soon you will start to stagnate in your relationship with God. You will become one of these. You be, become puffed up. You become bitter. You become that every negative word against the body of Christ. Just be aware. God do see what's in your heart. God see and this morning he's saying, who are the people that you are with? Are they truly speaking through the word of God, bringing life? Or are they the ones that make you to speak negative things, always murmuring, always negative? Who are these people in your life? Are they start changing your character, the way you used to be? You've lost your joy. You've lost your excitement going to church. Doesn't matter if it's good or bad. God still says, this is where I want you to go. But we look at people because of the people we allow in our lives. And especially young people. There's so many things out there today that can influence the young adults. Who are these people with you? Do they bring you closer to God or are they more away from God? Do you become more self-righteous than God-righteous or righteousness of God? If so, God says, listen, who are these people? You need to make a stand. Don't harbor one more night with them. Don't try to explain. Just cut them off. Coming back. Because God will deal if you continue. And we saw that Balaam, he continued. And then God sent an angel to stand in the way. And even the donkey saw that. And he hit the donkey three times before God opened his eyes. And he paid with his life. Listen. I want to ask you today. Maybe it's the people you're surrounding you with. People that's not truly there. Are people in your life that's not supposed to be there. Maybe that's the people that break you down. Make you negative. People speaking about always political stuff. Always about the hardships. Always about the natural. Listen, God is more than able. He will bring you out. He will bring you out so that you can glorify Him. But you make that choice. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So yes, see God. See God for the people in your life. And you know what the people God has placed there that built you up? You know, just stick with them. As God add to those, you understand. But if people start changing the character, what is wrong? If you start becoming dishonorable, etc. I don't want to go in all of that. I want to just say one thing. Who are these people in your life? And this is the question you need to answer. I would like to pray for you. Amen. Father, I thank you this morning. Maybe some of us is like Balaam and we've lost the way and we've been influenced by people and maybe even money is the biggest reason that we start with prosperity and stuff. Or maybe we've got hurt in a church and we surround us with people that have the same mindset. Cursing the pastors, cursing the church and prosperity and everything is negative Lord God you are asking today by your spirit who are these people in your life that bring you away from the truth of the word of God who are the people leading you away from the love of Jesus who are these people young people that allow sinful things in their lives and their own rebellion who are the people that allow you to grow these rebellious thoughts and not walking in love, not seeking God anymore, but self-righteousness, self-revelation. We live in a time where people do not believe anymore. Why? Because they surround themselves with people that already lost their faith. And the only way they justify themselves, Lord, is by speaking ill and cursing the church and cursing pastors, cursing men and women of God who are following God. But I pray this morning, God, be gracious to them. I pray this morning that as Balaam, you will come to them, but that you will raise them up, that you will ask them this question, who are these people in your life? 
so they can make a choice and follow you and come back to the place where they can truly worship you in spirit and in truth. I pray for them, Lord Jesus. I just speak life to everyone that's being hurt. Maybe you're on the way of breakthrough and you allow the devil to speak. Father, I rebuke that. I pray that they will enter into their breakthrough, into the promises, Lord. Not being influenced by any Balaam spirit. Not being influenced even by the bad character of people. But only focus their eyes on God. Knowing that God is for me. Knowing that God is all I need. And therefore, Father, thank you for being that God. That love us. That have grace with us. And, and that through your blood we can have the forgiveness of sin. And also salvation. I pray your blessing over everyone. Father just touch them in Jesus name. Touch them. Bring revival in the spirit. In Jesus Christ name. Amen. Amen. May God bless you. I pray Lord for Jonathan in Jakarta. Lord touch his body. May the power and the glory of God right now come upon Jonathan. Father I command his body to be healed. Right now, from his head to his toe, a manifestation of the presence of God. All sickness, all ill must go right now. I speak to his body, every limb, every arm, his legs, Father, to be strong right now. Right now, let him rise out of that chair, being completely healed in Jesus' name. I speak, Father, the name of Jesus. Thank you for touching him, touching him right now. That every, every muscle becomes become strong. Father, touch him every area in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. May God bless you. May you have an amazing day. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being partake. May God just touch you and may you see your breakthrough. May you enter into the fullness of God. Jesus loves you. God bless you. Amen.